Apple Pencil is excellent for note-taking, drawing, and other similar tasks because it's precise with palm rejection and other useful features such as pressure and tilt sensitivity. However, it doesn't just stop there. There are tons of tricks and features that it can do, such as one of my favorite, which is taking a screenshot from the left corner of the iPad effortlessly. Apple is known for utilizing screen corners for shortcuts, and it's pretty much the same with the iPad. There are two places where you can customize this. One is Apple Pencil under Settings, all the way down is pencil gesture, and you can pick the function of each corner. Another place is in notes, go to corner gesture, and you can also toggle on allow finger to swipe from corner, so it doesn't pertain to Apple Pencil. This way, whenever you don't have your Apple Pencil with you, you can still access these features using your fingers. After grabbing a quick screenshot, you can start drawing on it right away. And this is way faster than pressing the volume and the wake up button at the same time. It's a super convenient feature that I've been using a lot lately. This is the screenshot editor. We now have access to all the pencil and different tools down here. So you can mark it up here or adjust the size of the screenshot that you want to show. By the way, if you come here where the three dots it's at, you can minimize the tool dock whenever it's not in use. And if you don't like where the tool dock is at right now, just like on any of Apple's MacBook, you can move the dock to the side if you want just by dragging it like so, even to the top too. And you can also export a screenshot to the note-taking app that you use regularly. This way, you can store the information and annotate the document later on if you want. Now, one really cool feature in here is that you can actually change the screenshot to full screen, and it'll automatically turn this into a PDF file. And this file will contain every content on this page. And just like any other screenshot, you can now save and share that file anywhere you want right from here. As you see, the same gesture can be used on the right side as well. Just swipe up from the bottom right corner to access QuickNote. You can either type or write in QuickNote, and every time you open QuickNote, it's going to be from where you left off unless you start a new note from there. And yes, you can also draw in quick note by selecting draw on the keyboard. Speaking of note taking, inside note settings, you can also turn on access notes from lock screen. So you can quickly create or resume notes by just tapping anywhere on the lock screen with Apple Pencil. If you choose to resume last note, you can further customize how you want to access the notes app. Since we're talking about note taking, let's go through some of the tips and tricks that can facilitate our workflow. And one of my favorite functions here is shape recognition. This is great if you want to tidy up your note and make them clean looking, or if you always have problem drawing a straight line or even a star like me, like my star is just so ugly, I, I, yeah. All you have to do is to draw a line or any sort of shape you want and just hold the pencil at the end of your drawing. It'll recognize the shape or the line you want to draw and make them into a perfect shape. Now, if you want to draw straight lines with great precision, then you can also use the ruler tool down here where you can line it up and start drawing your line. This way, you can rotate the ruler however you like and draw the line to where it needs to be. If you don't like what you just drew or wrote, you can always use the three finger gesture to swipe left to undo or swipe right to redo. Or you can erase them instead of undo them by double tapping on the Apple Pencil. You can switch between the pen or the eraser it's actually a shortcut to erase whatever you had on your canvas without having to reach for the toolbar. And this is not an exclusive feature on a dedicated app. You can actually turn this on in the setting where you can switch between the current tool and eraser, which I have right now, or between the current tool and last used, or simply just show the color palette if you want. If you find yourself accidentally toggling the switch all the time, you can simply turn it off as well. While we are inside settings, if you're an avid note taker using the Apple Pencil, then you definitely want to have Scribble turned on. This will automatically detect your handwriting and convert them to text. Here are a few functions that Scribble provides. If you want to add a text, just tap and hold in the area where you want to add a text and wait for a gray area to appear and then write in it. Personally, I find this very useful, especially when you don't have a keyboard that's connected to your iPad. If you need to add a space in between words or letters, 
just draw a line through them in the middle. Usually when we want to select a word, we would double tap on it or triple tap if you want to select the whole line. Now on top of that, you can draw a line through the text or circle them to make the selection. To delete a word, just scratch the word out and the iPad will automatically delete the word. Scribble also allows your handwriting across the entire iPad. So wherever you can type, you can write on it instead of typing. Now here's a function that I find extremely useful and I don't think this is part of the scribble function. And that is if you have written down someone's number or email or even a date of some sort, you can actually select them, then tap and hold on it and turn them into a reminder or add them into the calendar. And yes, you can add phone numbers or emails into the contact list. Isn't that neat? So most of us are familiar with the handoff function, which is where you can copy a text from one device and then paste it into another one within the Apple ecosystem. Whenever you copy and paste, it'll also say where the information is from. And you can also do that with the drawings that you have done with Apple Pencil or your written notes. What's even better about this is that if you have a written note, you can actually copy the notes in written form and then paste them into another device in text form. And this really bridged different Apple devices together, hence the name Apple's ecosystem, I suppose. And recently, I just learned that if I'm using my iPad as sidecar and I can actually pull my Photoshop into the iPad, this way I can actually use my Apple Pencil on Photoshop and make it kind of like a stylus, if you will. I was actually trying this out to make a thumbnail, but apparently my handwriting is too ugly so I decided not to use that or else nobody would ever click into this video at all. Last but not least, one of the best function that I use the Apple Pencil for is to just sign documents and writing different informations inside all sorts of documents I need to do. The ability to write and edit a document, it's very useful. And on top of that, I can save my signature for all the future document that I need to sign and resize the text however I want inside the paperwork effortlessly. This makes handling and editing a PDF file a breeze and it's really, really useful. Here's a bonus tip for you guys. Since the Apple Pencil doesn't really show you how much more battery it has left, you can actually add that in inside widget. However, it doesn't really look good in my opinion, so usually I have the battery widgets right on the side tucked in. This way I can access them by swiping to the right so they are not always on my homepage. By the way, the blue iPad you see in this video is the new M1 iPad Air. Go check out this video if you are thinking about getting an iPad. And if you are watching this video and you don't have an iPad, I'm not sure why you're here. But thanks for watching. <laughs>